Hello everybody, I'm in the Letterwood, also known as Martin. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Hytale. So today we are going to be discussing the brand new blog post that was posted on the website just a few days ago. Now the reason that I've sort of sped this one forwards is because it's one of the more interesting ones we've had so far. It gives us a real look and insight to the development and the production of everything inside of the game. I would assume that all items or weapons or mobs or terrain are all created with this one single tool. It's going to be available to us when the game launches and it is known as the Hytale Model Maker. So if you want to have a little tinker with this for yourselves early then make sure you stick around in this video and I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. So much like the adventure mode even this development tool has its own backstory. So the TLDR on this one is basically back in 2011, please forgive my pronunciation on this, I want to say it's Elise Mora? I'm going to go with Elise, uh, began work on this software and modern API known as Craft Studio. So the premise of this tool was very simple. It provided clean and simple tools for people to create character models, objects, terrains, everything you would need in order to make a video game. Not only that, but the real standout feature about Craft Studio was the fact that its core mechanic was about being able to host a project on a server and other people could join in and help with the development. They could edit content that you are currently working on, similar to how like Google Sheets works. You know, like you load up the same document you can see people that are present there's a little chat box you can edit stuff in real time it's really cool and that is basically how craft studio worked so you could be altering the uv map which is basically the texture for a character or an item whatever it may be whilst another person is busy animating it that level of collaboration is something that i've never seen in any other game development tools before so we'll take a look at that in just a moment but let's finish out our little story so as time went on elise became aware that hypixel studios had actually chosen his tool in order to build some of the models in the earlier days of development but it would seem that relatively quickly they started to outgrow the software with their aspirations and that probably spawned many an email and conversation of can you add this into the tool set can it do this can it do that and to be honest he may just not have had the time to develop it so as you can imagine this is where the story concludes with Elite being hired by Hypixel Studios to work on Hytale not only that as well he managed to bring along a friend known as Bilou or Bilo B-I-L-O-U don't know how to pronounce it but basically Bilo is somebody that Elise had met whilst developing the software initially. Bilo was basically one of his first customers of the tool. They started to do a couple of game jams together and things went on from there. Oh, don't you just love a happy story? So if you haven't guessed by now, the footage you're seeing on the screen currently is of Craft Studio. And I hope it's just a testament to just how easy it's going to be to pick up and create things for yourselves. This recording that you're watching is me. This is literally me building things this morning. Having never downloaded the software before in my life, I managed to track it down, install it, and just had a quick whirl with it, and I made all sorts of stuff. I made my own Minecraft character, I made a potion, a sword, and even the world's dodgiest guitar, which you'll see very soon. But I made all of them in rapid succession without looking up a single tutorial. Now, it is important to note that I do have some previous experience with 3D softwares, but honestly, I've never even so much as skimmed the surface of those. I've downloaded, like, Minecraft 3D rigs and already pre-made assets and things like that, and only used the simple tools like move, rotate, stretch and scale and that's it and all of those are present inside a craft studio and it would also seem as though they are in the Hytale model maker as well so let's not dilly dally let's finally hop into the Hytale model maker and take a look at some of the differences what you're seeing right now is a collaboration happening in real time inside of the Hytale model maker on the left hand side you can see Zale working on the textures for the corgi which is adorable sort of filling out the sprite sheet with various different colors and stylings and on the right hand side of the screen we have Elise working on the animation and this is where I want to pause the video. Straight out the gate, it's probably quite fair to say that this model maker isn't quite as pretty as the old Craft Studio one. It's just all greys and whites, but honestly, that's not a huge issue for me. I would much rather a clean tool set that's not going to distract me from my work or be confusing to navigate, and ultimately, if I'm drawing colours onto my characters, I don't want the surrounding colours to confuse my eyes. Let's start off by talking about one of the major additions compared to the original tool, and that is the fact that you can utilise planes. And I'm not talking about the ones that fly around. Put simply, planes are like a piece of paper. It's basically a flat surface. You cannot see it from the side, but from any other angle, you can see one of its two faces. So our first glimpse of how these can be used is right here for the corgi's eyes. Now I did stop and wonder for a moment, why would they do that? Why not just draw them on the corgi's face, which you can see unwrapped on the left-hand side here, where it seems to be very creepily spooned out? And the answer was actually very simple. 
They want the eyes to move. They don't want them to sit there static on the character model, relying on exaggerated head movements in order to indicate the direction of the mob's focus. So as spooky as it looks, it's a smart move and breathes a lot of life into the character. Next, I want to focus on the bottom left corner of Zale's shot. So you'll notice that the color picker there is so much more accessible than the Craft Studio one. You've got the entire visual spectrum to click on and explore, rather than just having to work on some RGB sliders and only see the end product. More importantly, it seems to be visible all the time. Yes! You don't need to worry about opening a pop-up each time you want to tweak a little setting. I'm 100% certain that this will increase productivity, for sure. You'll notice here as well that colour picking from the existing artwork is still functional, so basically right-clicking on the grey dot inside of the eye allows it to become the focused colour, and then moving over to the nose, doing a left click, then draws it. Whoa! Hold on a second! Is that a scalable pencil? Can you make the pencil that you draw with bigger and smaller? Personally, I've not found that in Craft Studio. If that exists, I didn't find it, but that's really cool to know that's in there. Another major addition as well is the fill tool. The good old paint bucket seems to be missing from the old Craft Studio software, but it's going to save us a lot of time. Just remember to select a square area though before you use it, because otherwise, well, we all know what happens. Control Z! Before we move on to the animation side of the window, I'd just like to quickly point out a feature that I think a lot of people will make use of, and that is the revisions bar. Revisions, even in the old software, basically acts as a form of backup or even save states. So if one day you wanted to hop in and completely tear a character apart, redraw their entire texture sheet, you can do that without fear of losing the old one. I'd assume this is how they've been working with the varying types of mobs in Hytale as well. So for example, the Trorks. There are lots of different kinds of them. They probably create the base body and animations for them, and draw and build on top of them afterwards for new saves. Now adding to a mob could present some problems, right? You might be thinking to yourself, oh well, if they have already animated its walk, what happens if you put new blocks into the model? Well, if they've lined it up correctly, they should just automatically move. That's because you can see in the Hytale model maker that nesting is possible. Breaking down the technical jargon for you, nesting basically means grouping stuff together. So for example, if you build a shoulder plate that you want to put on one of your trucks, to get it moving along with the arm without having to do any extra work, you simply just drag it inside of its little sub menu. So now the arm and the shoulder piece are one and the same, so whichever way the arm moves, the shoulder piece moves. Let's just reinforce this one more time, just so you fully understand the concept of what I'm talking about. So have a little look here at the sword modeling time lapse. So let's pause the video a few seconds in and if you look on the right hand side you can see the list of objects that we have to create this sword. Now it's not overly handy because the main sword itself is called handle so just pretend that says sword. So within the sword we have the hilt which is kind of like the handle of the sword and you can see within that we're now starting to break it into little different bits and pieces for decoration. If you were to try and move the hilt it would move all of those things at once so it would move the blade one, blade two and also the hilt side. It wouldn't however move the handle part, that part wouldn't move. But if you were to move handle, the main one at the very top, because that is the leader of the group essentially, everything will move together and nothing will break apart. Which of course for animating later on down the line for swinging swords, pickaxes or lumberjack axes, that is exactly what you want to have. One big single unified piece. I hope that makes sense. Whilst we're looking at this video as well, notice how effective it is to use a plane at the very top of the sword. You can see that the tip of it is almost invisible from the side, but from any other angle, it gives a really nice thinning effect. Next up, let's move on to the animation tools, and I am so glad they expanded on this compared to the old Craft Studio software. Let's take a look at it inside a Hytale. So when I tried the old software, I just couldn't get along with the weird text list output that it would give you. My brain just doesn't like that method personally. But inside of the Hytale model maker we've been given multi-track keyframing which is something that most animators and even video editors alike are going to be far more familiar with. So let me break down the technical jargon for you. Everything I just said was actually very simple. So multi-tracking basically just means numerous lines, multiple tracks. Makes sense right? So you can basically see on the timeline we have a line for each body part that we're working with. Now the next phrase that I threw out there was keyframing and this is a very simple concept. All it is is telling the computer the start point and the end point of an animation. That can be rotating, moving, stretching, whatever you'd like. The beauty of keyframing is you only have to do each end and it can automatically fill in the rest for you. So let's say I've got this square on the screen right now. That is currently sat on frame one. Let's just drag the bar along a little bit and imagine that we're sat on frame 30, 40, 50, whatever it is, and say that the square is going to be on the opposite side of the screen. I hit play and voila, it seamlessly moves from one to the other. 
piece of cake. So all of you are going to be applying this very same method to your animations for your characters, your weapons, whatever it may be inside a Hytale. Now I know some of you are going to sit there all smug being like, oh well I already knew that. But I imagine that for most people, their first foray into video game making, modelling, texturing, whatever it may be, may actually be within Hytale. So I just want to help those guys out. Other than that, the only thing that's important to note in this demo video is the fact that there are numerous tabs along the top of the screen and they're all for very different animation types. So there's going to be a whole heap of animations you're going to want to create if you want your character to really feel alive in the world of Hytale. So we've got loads of them here. We've got different types of walks. We've got a spawn animation. We've got an idle animation, which is basically when the character isn't doing anything. So rather than being completely static and still, maybe you want your character to do the World of Warcraft thing where they stand there having an asthmatic fit. <gasps> <sighs> Or, you know, they could just be picking their nose or something. It's pretty safe to guess that all native mobs and factions from within Hytale are going to have fully fleshed out animation lists. So if you ever want to boot up a server and just play as any one of those characters, your immersion shouldn't be halted by a missing frame or two. It is time to swag out your character, dude. Let's talk attachments. So these are extra bits of clothing, trinkets and bling that your character can put on. And it seems to be as simple as ticking a box. So what's really interesting about this is that it seems as though you can apply them to other mobs. So in this video, we've got the zombie, of course, doing his thing, but you'll notice that the listing says skeleton armor and gladiator helmet. So you can take things that are meant for the skeleton and put them on the zombie, but I do have a little guess as to why that is. I reckon that the reason the skeletons, the zombies, and maybe even the humans as well, all share the same attachments is because they all stem from the same base model, with just a few tweaks made to each of them. It's very unlikely that you're just going to be able to go ahead and slap a gladiator cap on a void dragon, because honestly, its placement would just be all wrong. It'd likely just go to the center of its character model and be inside its belly or something. I'd imagine that for dramatically different shaped characters, you would have to make an entirely new attachment for them. A little bit of evidence to support this is the Corgi creation video. You'll notice that this little pupper has only got one attachment in the form of a red scarf. Don't get me wrong though, I think you will be able to drag in a humanoid helmet to a Corgi scene, but it just won't really look that great. You can sort of like rotate it and stretch it and skew it and stuff, but it's just not going to look quite right, is it? So that is why I'm guessing at the moment that I attachments are related to individual models. So my final notes about the Hytale model maker are that I absolutely adore the fact that so much more information is visible on the screen at any given time. Whether you're animating or modeling in Craft Studio, you could never see the position, stretch and rotation at the same time. It would only ever display whichever one you are currently utilizing. And I'm so glad that they're now all visible all the time. So there we go. Congratulations, you made it towards the end of the video. Now you're probably wondering, where can you get a hold of this model maker for yourselves? like I said. Well, if you open the description, which nobody does nowadays, there's a link right there to the Craft Studio software. And don't be spooked when you boot it up and it asks to set up a server. It should just be your local host address or like, you know, 127.0.0.1, which is basically just your own local address. It's only for people that are in your house on your Wi-Fi or just your own PC. You're fine. It's no exploit. So go ahead and have a tinker with that. Be sure to tweet me anything you create on at in the little wood on Twitter, or even just let me know in the comment section below. Low. But do bear in mind that this tool may not have been updated in a good few years. My guess is that as soon as they started working on Hytale, this project was just left dead in the water. So whatever bugs are in there, they're probably going to stay. There's going to be no technical support. Just enjoy it for what it is. Of course, this isn't the actual Hytale model maker, but it doesn't look worlds apart, does it? I can't imagine it's going to hurt to get well practiced with this kit ahead of the launch, right? You're going to be a whiz kid by the time this thing drops. Whilst we're on the topic of it as well, if any of the Hytale team are watching... What's the possibility of us getting the actual model maker ahead of the launch? That'd be really cool, right? You could strip out all pre-existing models, all materials, so there's literally no spoilers to be had inside of it. You just give us the tools so we can start creating and start learning and build up a community based around that. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been really, really enjoying these videos and the deep analysis we've been able to do on each of them. If you could leave a like on the video, that'd be fantastic. Be sure to ring the bell so you don't miss any future Hytale content, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.